Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unit 9, Lesson 7 Notes on Graphing Inequalities in Two Variables. By the end of the day, you will be able to graph inequalities on the coordinate plane. Now remember, graph means to make a picture of. Inequalities are things like greater than or less than or greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And the coordinate plane is where we make our graph. So you have an x-axis, a y-axis, and you have a bunch of points, each with x and y coordinates. That is why it is called the coordinate plane. So before we start graphing, I want to see if you can figure out the rule. We're going to look at four graphs, and we're going to notice what they have in common and what is different about them. So here we have the graph of y is greater than 3x plus 2. Take a minute, pause the video, and see what you notice about this graph. So on this graph, I notice that it has a y-intercept here at 2. That would match the line, would have an uh, y-intercept at 2. I notice that it has a slope of 3. So if I go up 1, 2, 3, I go over 1, and I have a new point. And I notice that I have a line here. This line matches the line y equals 3x plus 2, but it's dashed. This line is not solid. It's dashed. It's broken. That's a little weird. And also, I think the most obvious thing about this graph is you have some shading over here. You've got a bunch of shading on this side of the graph. What's that all about? Well, we'll find out. And our next graph is very, very similar to our first one. Our inequality has y is less than 3x plus 2, which is almost the same, except instead of greater than, we have a less than. And the only thing different, well, first let's look at what's the same. We have our y-intercept. We have the same slope. That's the same on this graph as well. And the only thing that's different is the shading is on the other side. Looking at our third graph right here, it looks very similar to our first one, but the only, so it's got our same y-intercept, our same slope as normal. The only thing that's different from our first one, it's got the shading on the other side is two, but this line is now solid. And what's the difference in our inequalities? Well, the only thing that changes from y is greater than three x plus two to y is greater than or equal to three x plus two is this equal to right here. So we would expect on our last graph to be very similar to our second one, and it is. It's got that same y-intercept, it's got the same slope, it's got a line at y equals 3x plus 2, it's shaded at the same half, but the only difference is we have another solid line again. So there must be something important with where our line is, whether it's dashed or whether it's solid, and on what side we have the shading. So let's see if we can complete these um, sentences. Graphs of inequalities with two variables take the shape of a line. They're not U-shaped like a parabola. They're not a circle, which is a kind of graph that we can make. No, these are all lines. Strict inequalities, those are the ones on this side, simply greater than, simply less than, they have a dashed line. Their dashed line looks like this. Non-strict equalities, those are ones with equal to, like greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, they have a solid line. And graphs and inequalities also have a shaded side. So to graph an inequality, we draw a line, and then we decide if we're going to have it dashed or if it's going to be solid. And then finally, we have a shaded side. We pick one side of our line and we shade it. But we don't just shade any side. How do we know what, what side to shade? How do we know what side to shade? Yeah, that's right. Let's find out. 
So here we go. First, when we're graphing an inequality in two variables, we have four steps. The first step is to decide, should our line be dashed or should it be solid? How do we remember again? Well, going up earlier, a dashed line is when you have y is greater than x or y is less than x. A solid line is when you have y is greater than or equal to x or y is less than or equal to x. After we decide whether a line is dashed or solid, we are going to graph the line. Then we're going to test a point that's not on the line. It's very important that you pick a point that's not on your line. And then we'll shade the side of our line that makes our inequality true. So I have two examples for you, and then we'll apply our skills. So for our first graph, we have y is greater than x minus 7. So we need to decide, is our graph going to be solid or dashed? By looking at this graph, we look at our inequality symbol. Since it's just greater than, and it's not greater than or equal to, this will be a dashed line. Okay, so we decided if our graph should be solid or dashed. Next, we're going to graph the line. So we're going to graph the line y equals x minus 7. To graph this line, I look at my y-intercept at negative 7, which is right here. And I notice my slope is 1. So I'll go up 1 over 1, 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Since I have a dashed line, if I'm working in notability, I could start out with a solid line. This is my this is my favorite way. I start out with a solid line, and then I take my eraser, and I just kind of cut out some parts of it for my dashed line. Isn't that fun? That's so fun. Okay, so now I need to test a point not on the line and see if that makes it true, if that makes our inequality true. So let's test this point right here. Let's test the point 2. No, let's not test that point. Let's test the point. Um, how about over 0 up 2? So let's find out. We're going to take our 0, because that's our x coordinate. We're going to plug that in for x and our inequality. And then we're going to take our 2, it's our y coordinate, plug it into our inequality. So we want to see, is it true that 2 is greater than 0 minus 7? Again, plugging in 2 for y and 0 for x. Well, 2 is greater than negative 7. So yes, this is true. Because this point makes the inequality true, that's the side of our graph that we want to shade. So we're going to take our highlighter and we're going to shade this side of the graph. And we've done it. We've graphed an inequality. So to graph this guy again, remember we decided should our line be solid or dashed. So we looked at our inequality symbol and then we figured out because it's not greater than or equal to, it should be a dashed line. It should be a broken line. So we graphed our broken line and then we tested a point to see if it makes our inequality true, and then we shaded that side of the line. Now, why did we do that? Well, that's because that's what the instructions say, haha. -ha. What we're trying to find here is we are trying to find all the points that make this inequality true. So instead of going through and testing each point, oh, does this point work? Does this point work? Does this point work? Does this one? What about that one? Instead of testing every single one, we just pick one and then we can shade the rest of the graph because the shade covers our whole graph. Go ahead and take some time, pause the video, and graph number three and we'll see how you did. So to graph the inequality represented in problem three, we have negative 2x plus y is less than or equal to 10. So our first step, we need to decide if this line should be solid 
or dashed. So we look at our inequality symbol. Our inequality symbol here is less than or equal to 10. Since we have that equal to, this will give us a solid line. So now we're going to graph our line. Now this line is not in slope intercept form, this line is in standard form. To graph the line, negative 2x plus y is equal to 10. Then we need to find out what is our x-intercept and what is our y-intercept. This is a bit of a review, so hopefully when you do this you get that x is negative 5, nope, x is negative 5, and y is equal to 10. We're going to break that up a little bit, and I will show you how I got those. Okay, so we're graphing the line negative 2x plus y equals 10. To find our x-intercept, that's when y equals 0. So that's the same thing as saying negative 2x plus 0 equals 10. So negative 2x equals 10. We divide by negative 2. x equals negative 5. So that's our x-intercept at negative 5. We do a very similar process to find our y-intercept. We'll set x equal to 0, so it gives us negative 2 times 0 plus y equals 10. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus y equals 10, so y is 10. So our y-intercept is at 10. So now we can graph our intercepts. I will graph a point, x equals negative 5, y equals 10, and then I'll connect them to make my line. I'm going to keep this line solid because we have less than or equal to 10. Now that we've graphed the line, we need to test a point that's not on the line and see if it makes our inequality true. How about we test over 4 up 2. Let's see what we get. Actually, I lied. Let's not do that one. Let's test over 8 up 2. For, that's a negative 8, isn't it, guys? Negative 8, 2. So again, we're going to plug in our negative 8 for our x and our 2 for our y and see if it makes our inequality true. Is it true that negative 2 times negative 8 plus 2 equal, oh, is less than or equal to 10? Well, that's 16 plus 2 less than or equal to 10. Is 18 less than or equal to 10? No, this is not true. So we'll want to shade the opposite side. It's very nice that lines only have two sides, so you don't have to keep trying until you find something that works. You can just say, does it work? Nope. Okay, it must be the other side. So to graph our inequality, we decide, do we want a solid or dashed line? And then we graph it, we test a point, and if that point makes the inequality true, we shade that side. If it doesn't, shade the other side. Now, Ms. Van Dyke, that's all fine and great, but when are we gonna use this in real life? Well, guys, I'm so glad you asked. We have two problems here that can each be represented by inequality. So what we're going to do first is we're going to read the problem and define our variables. We're going to say what x is and what y is, or pick other variables. Then we're going to write inequality to define our problem. And then finally, we'll graph our inequality. Now what's important here about inequalities is each of these problems does not just have one solution. There are several combinations that will work. So we make a graph of them instead of writing out what the answer is. So let's start with our first one. Logan and Isaac set a goal to plant at least 32 trees over spring break. Wow, good job guys, that's so cool, great idea. We're going to write and graph an inequality to determine how many trees each one of them should plant in order to reach their goal. So let's start out, let's let L be the number of trees Logan plants. 
And similarly, we'll let i be the number of trees that Isaac plants. I'm also so glad you're working together, guys. You're great. Now we need to, so now that we've defined our variables, we need to write an inequality. Now, good thing Logan and Isaac are working together. So the amount of trees that Logan plants plus the amount of trees that Isaac plants is going to be related to 32 somehow. Looking up here, it says at least 32. At least means they need to be greater than or equal to 32. There we have it. There's our inequality. Now we're almost done, guys. Now we just need to graph it. We have another line in standard form. Oh, first let's decide where is Logan and where is Isaac. Let's put Logan on our x-axis, which is now our l-axis, and Isaac on our vertical axis. Okay, so to graph a line in standard form, we're going to graph our intercepts. So they will be here at 32 and here at 32 as well. Now that we got for intercepts, is our line solid or dashed? Well, we've got a greater than or equal to. This is going to be a solid line. Oops. It's going to be a solid line. So we're going to connect our dots with our solid line. Now, it doesn't make sense to plant negative trees. It's not that they're uprooting any trees or anything. So we don't have to deal with negatives. We can just stay positive here. And now we're going to pick a side, we're going to pick a point on our graph and decide what side we should shade. What side do you want to pick, guys? What point? Let's pick small numbers. Let's do over four up to, those are very small. Okay, so this is representing if Logan plants four and if Isaac plants two trees, is that enough? Let's find out. So 4 plus 2. Is that greater than or equal to 32? Oh no, it very much is not. Guys, you're slacking. You need to plant more than that. So we will shade the other side. So what this graph represents are all the possible solutions, all the possible combinations of trees that Isaac and Logan can plant to reach their goal. For example, if we look at this point right here, that means if Logan plants 20 trees and Isaac plants 12 trees, then they will meet their goal. Or if both of them plant 16 trees, that seems the fairest. If both of them plant 16 trees, they'll reach their goal. Or if Logan plants 32 trees and Isaac doesn't plant any at all, they'll still reach their goal. Or if they both plant 40 trees. Wow, that's so much. Good job, guys. You can really dig it. Huh. So this graph represents all the possible combinations of trees that each guy can plant to reach their 32 tree goal. Okay, we have one more. Coach Van Dyne is taking the softball team to see a game. Chair back seats cost $30 and the bleacher seats cost $20 each. If he wants to spend less than $300, how many of each ticket can he purchase? Well, let's first define our variable. If we have our X and our Y here, let's let X be the number of chair back seats. And let's let Y be the number of bleacher seats. Now, since our chair back seats cost $30 each, we say 30 times however many chair back seats we get. That's how much it's going to cost. And we add that to our bleacher seats. 20 times our bleacher seats, which are Y. If he wants to spend less than $300, how many of each ticket can he purchase? That'll be less than, but not less than or equal to, remember, just less than 300. There we have it. That's our inequality. Now let's go ahead and graph it. Is this line going to be solid or dashed? This line is going to be dashed. 
Nice. So we're going to graph our intercepts. Um, to graph our x-intercept, remember that's setting y equal to 0. So that's 30x plus 0 is less than 300. I'm sorry, equals. We're going to graph our line. Equals 300. So 30x equals 300 and x equals 10. To find our y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0. So we have 0 plus 20y equals 300. So dividing by 20, because 0 is nothing, y equals 15. So in the context of our problem, this means that Coach Van Dyne can buy up to 10 chair back seats, but not including up to 10, so 9. And he can buy up to 15 bleacher seats, but not including 15, so 14. Okay, let's see how we do. We're going to graph our intercepts. We have y is 15 and x is at 10. So we're going to draw a line connecting both of those points. But remember, because it's not less than or equal to, this needs to be a dashed line. Yay. Now we're going to pick a point on either side of our line and test to see if it's true. How about this point right here? Two, four. Sure. Is it true that 30 times 2 plus 20 times 4 is less than 300? Well, 60 plus 80 is less than 300 because... 140 is less than 300. So yes, that's true. So we will go ahead and shade this side of our line. Ta-da! Now this graph represents all the possible combinations of seats that Coach Van Dyne can buy. He can buy two seats with chair backs. He can buy four seats in the bleacher. Or he can buy five chair backs and then nothing in the bleachers. He can buy 13 and nothing. He can buy 13 bleacher seats and nothing in the chair backs. So this graph is all the possible combinations that Coach Van Dyne can buy. So this is why we learn to graph inequalities with two variables. Those two variables represent we have two things at play, just like Logan planting trees and Isaac planting trees. Remember, our key ideas of the day is we need to check down here. Uh, we need to check if our line is dashed or solid. Then we'll graph our line, test a point not on the line, and shade the side that makes that inequality true. I hope you have a wonderful time on your homework.